Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the first ever episode of the Friday Night Gospel Show here on the Impact Community Channel. I encourage you right now, hit subscribe um, on that button because there are some incredible things coming, not just with this program, but multiple things coming in the future that you do not want to miss on this channel. So click that subscribe button right now, give this video a like, share it with your friends so they do not miss out on what we're going to be discussing today and just the things in the future. Just to give you... just introducing myself, giving you guys a little bit of background of who I am. I'm the youth director here at Impact Church um, in South Jersey in Cape May County. And I just felt just just to be transparent with you guys that the Lord really put it on my heart to start something online for younger people just to, to discuss and just talk about the things going on, the Friday Night Gospel. What does that mean? Same Jesus. He died and rose again. But in this in this culture, it's either really serious or it's a joke. Um, this program is the bring something in the middle, using the terms of people today, discussing what's going on, but keeping the gospel at the center. So I encourage you, listen, this is my first time doing this, we're going to learn together. I hope that you guys enjoy the things that we're going to be talking about. I got some incredible things planned for the future. Um, so that being said, we're going to move right into our first seg segment, and that's going to be called Fraud Alert. Now, I'm excited for this one because this segment, we're going to be discussing a certain topic and to see if it's going to be on Fraud Watch. Let's jump straight into this. This week, um, the topic is going to be Halloween. Now, the day I'm recording this is a couple days before Halloween. You're probably going to see this after uh, it's actually the day of Halloween, but I just think it's such a fitting thing to talk about just because it is the month of October. Now, just before I even get started, it's going to be very transparent here. I'm not coming at you for, um, I'm not talking about dressing up as a, in a costume as uh, being wrong or you know, being unbiblical, I mean, it's there's different things where you can be wearing where it's definitely a little bit suspect. Um, but the, really, what I'm trying to talk about in terms of Halloween being on fraud alert, being on a fraud watch, is the root and um, just kind of what actually Halloween is. Now, I'm going to read this verse in First Peter uh, 5, and this is verse 8. It says, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers are all over the world going through the same kind of suffering you are. So, why am I highlighting this verse? This verse shows us that as believers, we are in a fight um, against darkness. So, that means there's a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. Now, the Bible is being very clear. That there is no gray area, gray area in between where something might be in the, the kingdom of light and also in the kingdom of darkness. So when we look at anything, we as believers have to evaluate um, in our spirit and just evaluate and bring it up to the word. Is this part of the kingdom of light or is this part of the kingdom of darkness? So why is Halloween on Fraud Watch? Because our culture today has propped this up as a event, as a... Um, a holiday it's considered a holiday that is geared towards kids and in the reality of it it's a demonic holiday now that's a, some very strong words that i'm putting out there because i have reason there are reasons why i'm saying that right imagine you can picture it right now imagine i'm gonna set the scene for you imagine the, that neighbor that you have on your block that has decorated their house in witches gravestones ghosts what message is that sending it's definitely um, not sending uh, images of angels, of Jesus, or anything like that. And that's not what my point is with that. What message is that sending? It says, the kingdom of darkness is welcome in my house, in my property. Now, you might be thinking, oh, it's just, uh, it's fake. It's, the, it's really just not, like, it's just a thing. It's just a piece of cardboard. It's just a piece of that, a piece of this, right? But no. Even if they are symbolic, or even if you're not meaning to actually invite something into your house, it's not like a Ouija board, right? It still is sending a message that these dark things are welcome in my house. And trust me, the devil does not play any games. He does not um, miss an opportunity to try to influence your life um, with whatever you're doing, as innocent as it may seem. Um, we see toys, movies today, all geared toward um, witches, 
witchcraft. And that's not a coincidence because these are actually open doors for us to open ourselves to allow the devil to come in. You are actively celebrating the devil when you are celebrating ghosts, which is the dead, like in that manner. You are celebrating the devil because that's, that's what he is about. On top of that, what is the basis of Halloween? If we take away the candy, if we take away um, trick-or-treating, dressing up, all of these things, the basis of it is to make us scared, to bring fear. What's the purpose of a horror movie? It's, a, in, the, it's in the same category in my book. What is the difference? Um, what is it trying to do? It's trying to make you scared. We're going to read this verse in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. When we look at things through God's point of view, because that's as believers, that's our responsibility. From God's point of view, fear and timidity are not part of him, right? So can I pose this question to you wherever you may be right now? What is your response to fear? Is it to move closer to God or to be handling things by yourself? Um, as a young person, relatively young person and just a younger generation, right? I look at the state of our generation and I see uh, we running, us running from fear to a, a person, um, that we have a relationship with, that we feel close to. Like, I'm, I'm scared, I'm worried, I need to talk to this person or a counselor. That's like such part of our culture today. I'm not just talking about the unbeliever, I'm talking about the believer as well, wherever you may stand, right? But in reality, when we are scared, when we have fear, we have to run to the Lord um, as our source, as our life. So I'm just going to leave that there. Where is fear driving you? Certainly for me, it's not to go trick-or-treating, right? That is certainly not something I will be doing. Uh, that's not where fear will be driving me. So that is why Halloween is officially a fraud. Now moving along to our second segment, which is called top 10. I will be giving my top 10 of whatever the category is that is brought up in the week. If you want to see a category that you want me to answer, um, leave a comment down below in this video, either on Instagram, whatever platform, leave a comment and I'll try to fit you in on the next episode. I'm going to be ranking my top 10 candies. Now, first things first, I'm going to give you guys a few in my book that will not even come close to any top 10. One, candy corn. I think, I feel like this should be universal. Candy corn is probably one of the most garbage things I probably have ever tried and put in my mouth. You get them loose. It's just a disaster. It's a nightmare. Secondly, I have butterfingers. I don't know who invented this piece of candy, but... I think, I think a Butterfinger actually has to be banned because I, yeah, that's just, I don't know who thought of it. It's just not a good idea. Three Musketeers, a chocolate marshmallow thing. I don't even know what it is. It's just not good. Um, and then a very controversial one for me, and I know this one would get the most amount of hate, the most amount of, amount of slack. Reese's peanut butter cups come nowhere near a top 10. The fake peanut butter, um, they are, you have to freeze them. That's how people eat them. Um, they melt like quicker than almost anything. And when they melt, it becomes a, it's a semblance of just poop, basically. It's peanut butter, fake peanut butter melted with uh, chocolate and it's just horrible. Um, so you can come at me, but I stand by that. That Reese's Peanut Butter Cups comes nowhere near a top 10. Now moving on to my personal top 10. Now Coming in at number 10, it's a standard. It is a staple, it's a Snickers bar. Um, nothing flashy, it's got your peanuts, it's got um, your caramel, your nougat. Standard, like I'm not much, nothing much more to say about that. Number nine, this might be a little controversial to some, but this is a personal favorite. I have cherry Twizzlers, but they have to be cherry Twizzlers. Strawberry, the black stuff, you don't even wanna, I don't even wanna see that. The cherry Twizzlers is where it's at. Um, peel it apart, solid. Number eight, and this might be a little, a little not low enough for some people, but I have Sour Patch, and that means all varieties of Sour Patch. For me, um, something sour, not always my cup of tea, and I think they're just a little bit overrated um, in general. So they're at number eight. Number seven, I have Swedish Fish. I almost didn't put them on my list, but uh, they are just a solid standard candy that I didn't quite put, feel like putting at nine, and it was top five was just definitely just nowhere near where they had to be. So Swedish Fish solid road trip candy. Um, number six, I have Haribo gummy bears. Now I'm a big gummy fan. Um, gummy bears are such a solid, su such a solid, solid candy. 
um, I will put the Haribo brand almost against any other brand of gummy bears, and I'll take that to the bank. Number five, fitting with the name, it is Take Five, and I think this is a candy bar that is slept on heavily. Think about it this way: you got your pretzel, you got your caramel, you got your. I believe there's some kind of peanut butter in there as well with the chocolate coating. It's a mixture of all your favorites, and I know I just slated Reese's for being horrible, but Take Five is actually solid. You got the sweet and salty all in one. You cannot ask for much more. Now, moving on to number four, I feel like this is also very slept on candy. It's Milky Way because it's not just your standard Milky Way. You have a couple different varieties, whether it's dark chocolate, uh, the midnight kind. There's just a couple that it's a standard solid um, candy bar. I love caramel. I know see people say caramel, but caramel is the way to say it. Um, you'll see by my number one pick, I really, uh, it might be controversial. But number three, you have Twix, another one where it's just solid, solid, solid. You cannot go wrong with a Twix bar. You go into Wawa, a Twix bar is always something on the top of your list looking for a chocolate bar. Number two, now these have not been around uh, the last couple of years, I really haven't seen them that much, but they're a Laffy Taffy rope. Um, if anyone went to Ocean City High School in the past 10 years to the school store, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you went to high school with me, especially as a freshman and sophomore, you know Laffy Taffy rope is the best. Laffy, it's not quite Laffy Taffy. It's a long, it's like a nerd rope with no nerds. Um, I cannot rave them about them enough. Um, any flavor really is good. It's horrible for you, which which is good because it's candy, so we all realize that. But Laffy Taffy Rope, it's a bit of a rogue one, but I will take that at number two. Number one, the most controversial one of them all. Give it a little drum roll, a little drum roll, it is the 100 grand bar. Now you might be thinking, I might not even have, have had that before. If you're looking for a chocolate bar that covers all bases, it's sweet, it's savory, it has some crunchies, on the outside mixed in with the chocolate. A hundred grand bar is where it's at. I don't think you can come with a mass produced chocolate bar that is anywhere close to a hundred grand bar and I will take that. And that's my certified top 10 candy bar list. Comment down below your top 10. Now moving into this last segment, uh, the title of this is gonna be what is really going on? Now this is a segment where we look at things happening in pop culture, just in culture in general, um, with influencers and we have a little chat about them. All right, so this first topic as the first episode at this point in time is basically a layup, right? I'm gonna take a, a little bit of a different angle, but we're talking about T-Swift and Travis Kelsey. Now, NFL's milking this thing to the optimal degree. This The, the conversations have been like ongoing for months at this point, right? Um, but I'm just gonna preface these conversations will always have some of my opinion. I obviously do not know Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey at all. So this is strictly on speculation, what I observed from the outside and my personal belief on the matter, whatever that may be. Um, and I'll try to bring some biblical points in there as well um, when talking about this stuff, right? So just preface it, don't get mad at me. Um, I might not like someone that you like. All right, it just, it is what it is, all right? Now, I'm just going to start this off with a little bit of a hot take. I don't really like Taylor Swift. I think she's a little bit overrated. Um, I think that there's a lot. It's just blown out of proportion. I'm just going to give you background. In eighth grade, the song Shake It Off came out. Now, me as an eighth grader, I was really, um, I wasn't turned off. But, like, why would I ever like that song? Now, I know that she's definitely done more besides that kind of style of music. But when you know someone, just like Justin Bieber, it's hard for me to to like, because in fifth grade, that's when Baby came out. And that was, as a fifth grader, it's like, that's the most feminine thing ever. So it's hard for me to like Justin Bieber at this point, because when I got exposed to them, it was at a, such a negative thing that I was so not interested in, right? Um, I Honestly, the, the one thing I, am, I, I can appreciate about her, that her tour and her life schedule is crazy. And the fact that she does it so well, I applaud her for that, right? So at this point, right, I want to come into this, this whole relationship topic at a whole different angle. Um, and I am partial to the belief that Travis Kelsey is a better catch than Taylor Swift. Now, this is probably a bombshell for a lot of you because that is just not what the conversation's about, really, in terms of like Travis is 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 dating up and all that. Um, and why I wanna, what kind of I'm gonna bring out here is we're in the age of hyper-feminism and thankfully, um, we are starting to 
push back on that a little bit. You have the likes of like the characters like Andrew Tate, um, all those quote unquote red pill guys, right, that are pushing back on the ultra feminists. And because of how far we've gone, they have been so heavily embraced, right? And I do agree with some of the relational aspects that Andrew Tate brings to the table. Obviously, there are so many red flags, especially as believers that we obviously acknowledge, um, but there are things like self-discipline um, and valuing, valuing a woman for who they are in certain aspects. Um, and being a man, that's a traditional man. I really resonate with that as we have gone so far from that. So why am I bringing that up? Um, it's this, right? In the eyes of men, for me even personally, I do not see Taylor Swift's package as very attractive. Now, why is that? Taylor Swift has a history of being with guys writing a hit album about them and just exposing basically their dirty laundry. Now, as a guy who would want to be in a committed relationship with someone and wanted to make our relationship sacred in the sense that we trust each other, um, what I say to you is private, what you say to me is private, I don't want to break that trust. That would be very hard for me to put myself in a situation where if this goes wrong, um, there's going to be exposing happening. Now, of course, I'm not oblivious to the fact that um, some of these guys might have wronged her in certain ways, but I will also admit that to, in almost 99% of cases to make a toxic relationship, it takes two people. And it's not just, it's not just one side of the whole time. So I cannot be oblivious to the fact that Taylor Swift definitely has a lot of red flags. If she's constantly in and out of relationships and exposing them and, yeah, I mean, just put yourself in that guy's shoes, right? You're committed to this person because you found a connection, whatever the case may be, and you're sharing your life with that person. And then they go, and then and then they say it's over, and whatever happens, that you break up, and then suddenly your relationship is now the number one selling album in the world. I find that very hard to um, comprehend. That I would be thro I would be thrown throwing myself into that. Um, and now that may be Travis, he might be wanting to do that. Again, I'm not questioning his judgment in terms of that. I'm just saying from an outsider looking in, um, it would be hard for me to come into a relationship like that. We look at this all the time with artists. We look at Olivia Rodrigo. Um, I don't know why a guy with any moral values and a personal worth would be dying at a chance um, to get in a relationship with her. Like we look at her recent music and if you look at the lyrics, it honestly makes you sick. Um, to the fact that she's one exposing and that the things she, she's saying about that person um, in the in the vein of art, quote unquote, and it's just art and it doesn't really, like I would, like I couldn't imagine um, committing myself to a person like that and then them going and just slandering me. She doesn't say names, but I like we're pretty, like it comes out of who it is, right? All right men and women alike need to realize that when, Unless a God thing happens, if a man or, man or a woman sells out their partner, they're going to do it again. Now, I'm not saying just because you make a song about someone, you're selling them out, but you're willing to break a bond of trust that was previously there. Now, I, if you say they're broken up, so it doesn't matter anymore, I would tend to disagree. I would hope that um, if you actually like someone, that maybe your relationship would have been a bit deeper, deeper and that... Um, just because you broke up didn't mean you, you don't hate the person, even if they wronged you. I would hope that there would still be some honesty and some grace there or whatever, whatever the case is, that you suddenly just don't go throwing people under the bus. That would be my point and my um, final say in this, this discussion of this relationship. Just because she says she wouldn't, like just, just because someone says they wouldn't do it again doesn't mean that they won't do it again, barring intervention from the Lord, of course. Now moving into our last topic, um, in this segment, I just want to talk a little shortly about the rise of Islam in the culture online. Um, I'm coming at this strictly observing as a Christian. Um, we see the likes of Andrew Tate, Sneeko, and a group like the Beta Squad in the UK, and they've all brought the culture of Islam into um, social media world and a lot of young people. Like you just see, like words we that are now being more commonly used um, that are all from the Islamic religion. Um, and I'm not saying, I'm not bringing this up to, to hate on anyone because I'm a Christian. That's not my point in saying this. 
Um, but what I find very interesting that Christianity is the, the, the religion that is bashed the most. And if we look at even because tolerance is a very hot word, if we look at tolerance from um, comparing the two religions, Christianity is much more tolerant um, in many senses than Islam. And tolerance is not, maybe not necessarily the right word. There's more um, grace and mercy. I'm just going to give guys an example so you hear where I'm coming from with this. When we say like an LGBTQ member um, comes to a Christian uh, church and is interested, um, we welcome them in because we're all flawed. We all have our issues. But um, what we do say is if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have to repent and change your ways, right? So there is, it's not... Uh, come as you are and stay as you are, right? If you truly want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to actually integrate yourself fully into a Christian community, there has to be repentance or else there's going to be too many issues that we're, on, we're not aligned on to, to fully work if we're being honest with ourselves. Now, if we look at um, an Islamic country or Islamic community, if they're truly living by what their word, the Quran says, um, the penalty is death. So... I don't see where um, the similarity comes in with the two religions, but truly we see the culture, the like Islamic culture kind of saying like making, making themselves more open to tourism and all that. So it's like they're, they're being more lenient, but boiling it down to the, the, the basis of the religions and the tenets of the religions. Islam, it's a death penalty. Now, whether people enforce it or not, that's up to them. But that would they, the Quran would say they're not true Muslims, they're not true believers. In the Bible, um, it's about show, sharing them the truth with love so that they make a decision, okay, is Jesus the one I want to follow and I want to give my life to? So that's totally different. And I, I think it's very interesting that the devil uses people at the top to influence um, the world to look away um, from what the Lord is offering. And that's really what's going on. Um, so that being said, that's where we're, that's we're going to end it today. I hope that you enjoy this episode. I hope that if you have a uh, question that you'll comment, um, you'll comment, I'll answer any questions you guys may have. Um, I hope that you guys will give me suggestions if you like a certain topic, like, like a certain segment. So I know you guys are interested. And as we keep doing this every week, guys, I hope um, that the community will grow and that you guys will be impacted from what the Lord wants to do here in South Jersey. We'll see you guys next time and peace.